Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Boeing 737 MAX 7 completes successful first flight. New York Senators call for IG investigation of doors off flights. And KSMO sees sharp decline in jet traffic. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's March 23rd and this is Airborne Unlimited. Boeing's new 737 MAX 7 has successfully completed its first flight. The airplane remains on schedule and now begins a comprehensive flight test program, leading to certification and delivery in 2019. Piloted by Boeing Test and Evaluation Captains Jim Webb and Keith Otsuka, the airplane completed a successful three-hour, five-minute flight, taking off from Renton Field in Renton, Washington at 10.17 a.m. Pacific on Friday and landing at 1.22 p.m. at Seattle's Boeing Field. The airplane was put through tests on its flight controls, as well as its systems and handling qualities. The airplane is the third and newest member of Boeing's 737 MAX family to be produced, with a maximum capacity of 172 passengers. The MAX 7 has a range of 3,850 nautical miles. The 737 MAX family incorporates the latest CFM International Leap 1B engines, advanced technology winglets, Boeing Sky Interior, large flight deck displays, and other features. The 737 MAX is the fastest selling airplane in Boeing history, accumulating more than 4,300 orders from 93 customers worldwide. After the break, next week's AEA 2018 Airborne Schedule. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus Engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. It's that time of year again when the Aero News crew ventures out for some special coverage projects. And next week we'll be covering the Aircraft Electronics Association Annual Convention and Trade Show, live via airborne-live.net. What that means is that Airborne will not webcast next week, while the entire crew is livecasting from AEA. But we'll be returning the following week. Our AEA coverage will feature all the exciting news of the avionics industry, so do check out airborne-live.net and join us for live comprehensive coverage of AEA 2018. The opening session and new product introductions will be held Monday, March 26 at 8.30 to 12 Pacific Standard Time. Live interviews from the convention floor Tuesday, March 27 will be at 1300 to 1600 Pacific Standard Time. And live interviews from the convention floor on Wednesday, March 28th, will be at 13.30 to 16.30 Pacific Standard Time. The Greater Binghampton Airport will host the Greater Binghampton Air Show for the first time since the event was suspended four years ago due to scheduling conflicts with some marquee performers. The one-day show will feature headlining performances by the U.S. Army Golden Knights Parachute Team and the U.S. Air Force A-10 Demonstration Team, which will also fly a heritage flight, a sentimental tribute that will feature the modern-day A-10 Thunderbolt flying in formation with a World War II-era P-51 Mustang. Aspen Avionics and Caesarian Aerospace have announced a co-development partnership that will bring certified avionics to the burgeoning UAS and unmanned air taxi marketplace. Aspen Avionics and Caesarian's focus is on FAA certified autopilots, communication, navigation, and surveillance systems for small, medium, and large UAS, including future cargo and passenger carrying aircraft. 
IAC President Mike Hewer, IAC No. 4, submitted his resignation at the IAC Board of Directors meeting on March 17, 2018, as previously planned. The board appointed Robert Armstrong, IAC 6712, as the new IAC president for the remainder of Mike's term, which runs until July 2018. Robert was elected as the IAC's vice president in July 2017. The board will consider and appoint a replacement to fill that officer position in early April. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Following the accident last week in which a sightseeing helicopter went down in the East River in New York City, resulting in the fatal injury of five passengers on board, aero ignorant U.S. Senators Charles E. Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand are calling for an inspector general and NTSB investigation to examine exactly how doors off helicopter sightseeing flights and the harness systems used on the aircraft ever received FAA approval. The Fly Nyon doors off helicopter tour that crashed was operated by Liberty Helicopters and offered passengers a custom photo experience in which they can hang out the side of the aircraft to take photos. However, Schumer explained that the aerial tour required passengers be strapped in using heavy-duty harnesses that may have ultimately prevented the passengers from escaping. On March 11, five passengers in a helicopter operated by Liberty Helicopters were killed when the helicopter crashed in the East River. Schumer explained that March 11 crash was not the first incident involving Liberty Helicopters. The company's fleet has now been involved in three crashes in the past 11 years. Following the accident and before an official investigation could get underway, Schumer urged the FAA to take action. After these messages, KSMO sees sharp decline in jet traffic. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. The number of jets departing Santa Monica Airport fell sharply in February compared to the same month in 2017. But overall, departures mostly remain steady, even showing a slight increase over the previous year. In February 2017, there were a total of 599 jet departures from KSMO, and only 139 in February 2018, a 77% decrease. Turboprop activity increased from 303 in January to 331 in February. Suja Lowenthal, the city manager's advisor on airport affairs, said that the statistic may indicate that some jet activity might have shifted to turboprop aircraft. Helicopter departures increased from 72 in February 2017 to 126 in February 2018. Piston aircraft departures also increased from 1,245 in February 2017 to 1,649 in the same month this year. But piston departures are also down overall from 2016, which saw 2,052 piston departures in February, before several aviation tenants were ousted from the airport by the city. In December 2017, the runway at KSMO was inexplicably shortened by 1,500 feet under a bizarre and questionable agreement between the city and the FAA, which is intended to lead to the eventual closing of the airport. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. <laughs>